All right. Good evening, everyone. We thank you for joining us with another edition of Quarantine Live with WOW Ministries. We're so excited that you joined us today. And I ask right now that you guys would like and share this broadcast. We have someone very special on today, and I'm so glad that she is here with us. And so without further ado, I see that she is ready and we are going to bring her in. And I speak none other than that of Supervisor Auntie Jackie <laughs> Clark Chisholm. How are you today, Auntie? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. good. It's good to see you. You too. It's good to see you. I'm I'm so glad that you know we're finally able to do this because I know before the last time things, yeah. but <laughs> but God has worked nice. it out. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. You're here now. So I just want to start off with saying, how have you been thus far? I know the first time we tried this, we had just come into this pandemic. Um, but how are you doing? How are you doing now? How's everything going for you now? I'm good. I, I don't have any complaints. God is good. And we just thank God for still being alive and not being affected by the coronavirus. Um just grateful to God for that. I, that if, if you're not grateful for that, I don't know what you should be grateful for because if you have not been affected, because so many loved ones and so many people have been affected by it, it has ch literally changed people's lives. So, you know, it's really difficult when you have to go through something like this. And the bad part about it is that you guys, as the millennials, I, I'm so sorry that you all had to experience this. We never, I mean, I never experienced this before our time, but, you know, to see um, you all having to go through this as well as me, but, and, and also with our loved ones and family members that we have seen to be taken by this uh, horrible virus that has oh. affected our country. So, and the world in general, so. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're you're doing well, and um, I know for this time, a lot of people have been using this time to be productive in doing things that um, you know, they kind of weren't doing before. So, yeah. have you been able to do things that you haven't been able to do? I am. I almost forgot the time because I'm working on my second volume, my second journal book, and I was sitting here working on it, and then I looked down at the clock. I was I misspelled something, and I looked down, and when I looked down to see if it was spelled correctly, I said, "Oh, it's six o'clock." And I, I, I said, "Corey, I, and you didn't call me, so I was saying, well, I, I wonder if it's still today." <laughs> and then um, I, when I got on, it said you were you were um, that I was in your in your uh, backstage. So, and that's how he came on. Okay. So you've been, so have you, you finished your devotional book, right? I finished one, okay. uh, volume one is done, but I've, I've already, and that's been out, but I'm going to re-put that out and I'm working on volume two and I'm also working on a cookbook. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. And yes. And since you mentioned <laughs> cooking, um, I guess this is the question everybody want to ask. When are you coming back cooking again? Well, I was supposed to do it this week, but Angel's not going to be home this weekend. So I have to wait until next weekend. She'll be home next week. So We'll cook next week um, okay. instead of this week. I'm going to cook. And that'll give me a break. I just, you know, because there's a lot of preparing and putting in, trying to get things ready. You know, when you're doing it on your own, if I had a production, so it would be right. totally different. I speak that. You're going you're gonna to get it together. You're going to have what? a production. <laughs> you're going to, because um, I see how, you know, how you're starting out. And I know yeah. that it would be really um, beneficial for you to have that team so you can really get it um, right. going. Right, and it would take a lot of, you know, time that I have to spend doing it to take it away from it. So, and that's what I'm really looking for. I'm gonna also change the time um, to six o'clock as opposed to seven. I did it at seven because I wanted most people to have a chance to do whatever they need to do on Saturday and then be able to do it. So I changed it to seven, but I'm gonna push it back to six o'clock because I figure, you know, if I'm on there and I'm still on there at eight o'clock, that's too long. I, I we right. need to do something better. So right. I'm gonna change the time back to six and hopefully we'll be finished by 7.30 mm -hmm. um, after we have the finished product. And then okay. sometimes I have to, you know, sometimes it calls for me to go on and prepare my thing, especially if it's something that's marinating. And I do a lot of that, mm -hmm. marinating things. Um, and when you're going to marinate something, you have to, I have to let them know in advance, way in advance to do it. So it's a, just a bit preparation is, you know, it can be cumbersome. But other than that, I enjoy cooking. Uh, I am not a chef. 
Um, I'm just well, yeah, yeah, you are. You, you're Chef is Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dorinda that named me that. I told that you, can we call me no Chef is? And, it, and it's and it's sticking because everybody, every time you see it, they just call you Chef is now. That's so it right. just stuck with you. Well, and, and, and you know, it's funny because I just, I've always been the cook in, in our family and I've always, and my mom, basically it was because of Dr. Manny Miles Clark made me be the cook in our family. So I always watched her, you know, uh, and she taught me how to do things. Her, her sister and another aunt, aunt, aunt Ada from um, Jamaica, she taught, uh, not from Jacob, from Barbados, but she was another person who really, really helped me to learn how to uh, cook and to be uh, efficient at cooking and that's what i do so i still to this day like i tried a new recipe last week with my kids i was in phoenix what right and, right. I, and I tried a new recipe on them and they loved it so i said okay so i'm gonna do that with next time so i will so they, they they're asking when are you going to cook with your sisters again oh i hope never no i'm just kidding <laughs> Because you know, I know you you're telling us that you enjoyed it, but we enjoyed it because we just no, enjoyed the dynamic. Y'all were looking at comedy. Was looking at comedy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have to see when they're gonna come. I'm gonna make them come in and we'll we'll do we have to work it out. We'll work out another day so we can cook because Twinkie didn't come. Right. She was being lazy. She didn't come. So we're, we're going to work on another day and get it worked out so we can do it again. So everybody has something to laugh at. Right. Uh, Dorinda was plant. She was cooking everything, trying to cook yeah. everything. Well, no, actually, you, you, you cooked her food for her. I said, I, did, ain't do right. nothing. I, said she, I, said, I said, Auntie Jackie has cooked all of Dorinda's food. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And she will act like she could cook, but she been now. You know what? Since that program, though, Dorinda really has been cooking. I really she's called me and asked me how to cook a couple of things, and I I would tell her, okay, Facetime me, and I'll show you how to do it. And she has done it. So she and and I guess she doesn't have anything else to do, other than when we're doing our church services and stuff that she's committed to at the church. Um, she'll she'll try to cook, but it's got to be something that she wants, like. Like I cooked shepherd's pie, I think at the very beginning of my the cooking show. Right, right. And so people have been asking me to do that again. So, you know, I may try that again with something else because I do want to do a vegetarian dish for people who are not, who you know, who are vegan. So I, That's I'm going to do something. That's You're vegan? I at the beginning of the year, yes, I went um, vegan. Are you happy with it? I, I am. I don't really miss meat. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's what you say. Okay, I'm gonna bring you some. But I said when I saw you make that salmon quiche, I said this is gonna make me go back into <laughs> back but it's into. Not, I mean, but it's poetry. It's not fish. I mean, it's right. not pork or chicken. So I mean, and it's okay. You can still you can still do fish. You can just just do fish. But um, it was really good though. And I, I, know. I made I know I've made that probably about ten times since I did the show. Wow, wow. Yeah. So um I wanted to ask, um, you haven't made a dessert yet. You know, you cook the dinner, but it's no dessert. So okay, so you want me to make a I'll make a seven up pound cake. That's another thing that I that's the only cake I know how to make. I know how to make really? a seven up pound cake. So I might I might do that online one day. I'll and do that. I will. I, I had the privilege when I was at your house uh, during your time when you were honored at the banquet to taste some of the hot water cornbread. And I want to say here, I can't find that mix anywhere here. Where you live at? <laughs> I'm here in Jersey and I couldn't find it in Walmart. I could, I can't find it. So what am I okay. supposed to use? Oh, you're supposed to call Amazon.com sugar and get you some shipped to your door. What's wrong with you? You know I'm an Amazon Prime member. I got yeah, everything. I you. If I if I call Amazon, if I go on Amazon, they don't have it. I send them a, a note. Please get this product, and they get it. Wow. So my my um my daughter in law, her mom lives in. They live in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. They didn't have it either. And so every time I went to Phoenix, I was taking two, five to ten pounds of uh, cornbread mix. I was there uh, last week, mm -hmm. and they now have it at their Walmart there. And I and up with it, and they had just put it out. And when I went back around the second time, it was only four bags left. Oh, wow. I took, I took two, one for my daughter and one for her mom, because her mom lives there too. And she was uh, calling me tomorrow, when you gonna make hot water cornbread? When we gonna have some? That's all they want me to do when I go to Phoenix is cook. What? 
That's it. Well, yeah, I'm gonna try to find it. I'm gonna have to go to different. You you say it's at Walmart, right? It's at Walmart, but just call you, uh, Amazon. That, they'll deliver it to your door. You ain't got to go to the store. Girl, go, go to Amazon.com. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I want to talk about you know some of your uh, ministry moments. You are now supervisor of the Dominican Republic, and I was just so honored to come and share with you on that special day of uh, you becoming a supervisor. It was such a, um, a wonderful occasion and event. Um, I wanted to ask you, did you ever see yourself becoming a supervisor? You know, Coy, I never, I never even thought about being a supervisor. I ain't wanted to be no supervisor. I ain't thought about being no supervisor. I ain't prayed to be no supervisor. And this is how you know when when God has a plan for your life and you don't know what it is. And you know what my my question, I mean, the word of the day that I'm focusing on today for my devotional book, the word of the day is focus. Mm. And my scripture was, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all this righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, I never thought about being a supervisor. I never wanted to be a supervisor. I never asked nobody about being a supervisor. I don't even know what a supervisor did. <laughs> But this, but I have went and ministered at this pastor's church, at the bishop's church twice. Mm-hmm. And you know, I just, I mean, and I'm not no preacher like my sister Dorinda. I'm more of a teaching person. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and so he saw me one year in convocation, probably about five years ago. He saw me and he, and I had been to minister at his church twice and his wife really loved me. And, um, and so he saw me and he asked me, he said, Sister Jackie, I want to, he said, I really want to talk to you. Would you mind calling me? And I said, sure, no problem. You no, know, he, he asked me if I mind him calling me. Mm. I said, sure. And he called me and he asked me, he said, I'm starting a jurisdiction over in the Dominican Republic. And I would really like for you to be a supervisor. I said, oh, I got to pray about that. So I didn't talk to my husband. I got to talk to my pastor. Because those are positions and things that you take on, especially when you don't know anything about it. Mm. You, know, you want to be... You want to be skilled and you want to be knowledgeable of what you're walking into. So I talked to my my husband about it first. At first, my husband really didn't want it because he was saying, well, I don't think you should do that because that means you got to lead a country. And if something happened, I can't get with you. I can't get to you. And, you know, and then I, and I told him, I said, well, honey, just pray about it. I said, I, I'm praying about it. And I, I really, you know, at first I really didn't want to because I didn't know what a supervisor did. Then I started talking to supervisors and mm-hmm. found out what the position was, you know, entailed. And then I talked to my pastor and I prayed, I asked my pastor to pray with me about it. And I, cause I wanted to make the right decision. And we prayed about it. And a couple of weeks later, we talked about it again. And he said, Jackie, I think that it will be a good position for you because mm-hmm. you are a good, you know, uh, teacher of the word. He said, you should do that. And I, so, and at that point, that's what really made me take it. Cause I didn't know anything about it. It's still been a very big tr- struggle for me because you know, we, last year was our first year really going into the country and doing in the country. Mm-hmm. And then we walked, and then so this year when everything was supposed to start taking place, here we are facing uh, the pandemic. Right. And over there, you know, I just did a, um, I just did a, a video presentation last night because the churches over there are not even existing because they don't have any. Um, they don't have the the funds. Some people mm-hmm. over there don't make but a hundred dollars a month. Wow. So, you know, it's, I mean, it's very difficult. And um, just trying to pull the women together and then you got to teach them so they understand what the Church of God in Christ really stands for and what we, mm-hmm. what we do. And um, and this year was supposed to have been the year that I was able to go over there more. Mm-hmm. Um, I had planned myself to do that. But then all of a sudden, here we walked into this pandemic. So that stopped everything. So I just made a new uh, video today, or well, yesterday, to put up about, uh, you know, getting people to see if they can donate, even if it's just five dollars or a dollar, you know, because it will help my my department. And because there are people over there that are starving to death, they have no food, mm-hmm. stores are closed, they're, you know, they're struggling. So mm-hmm. they're really literally living off the land. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Well, so, oh, and we need so you, so you know, that's, you know, that's a work from God because you're going to a place where you know, they don't have a lot, you know, they're in need and they're everything. So it's not like, you know, some of these other jurisdictions that have a lot and have. So, wow. So I believe that that is 
called by God. But I see some people asking, what, what exactly does a supervisor do? Well, so what the supervisor does is she pulls the women together. And if you notice that in most churches, uh, it, it's more women than men. Mm -hmm. And so really the women are the one who do the work in the church to help build the church. Okay. And so, and so what I'm doing now is pulling the women together, getting everybody put in place. I had to get this praise and worship team started. I got to be, I mean, these are things that you have to set in place. Mm -hmm. Those are things that the women's department does getting Sunday school set up in some of the places who don't even, who didn't have Sunday school. They didn't have, um, you know, um, books to start Sunday school, which we do have. And Sister, um, uh, Sister Wimbush, not Wimbush. Yeah, Sister, what's her name? But Mother Gatlin. Gatlin. Yes, yeah. And Mother Gatlin is, is uh, doing that, that project as an incentive for the, all the old Sunday school books that we can send to other countries. And I think that's just an awesome um, task to undertake. But setting up all the departments, getting people ready for going forward into um, the Church of God in Christ and learning the pathway of the Church of God in Christ. That's what we were doing. Okay. Okay. And do you have, um, do you have some young people involved with it? I have some young people. We have, um, in fact, Angel goes with me when we go over. Um, and then my son went with me one year. He, she and, and my son, they work with the praise and worship team over there. So they do have a praise and worship team. Uh, one of our pastors over there who's very um uh who who's very known over there he is a part of our of the church of god in christ he actually spoke just this year in january at the leadership conference he mm -hmm. had an opportunity to speak and so his church is the most productive in a small area um that we go into uh pastor aldo um and he has been very instrumental in his young people doing you know doing praise and worship they don't have choirs or nothing but that is something else that i'm going to be putting into place as well having a choir okay so if i can ask you as um being a woman in leadership um did you ever face any struggles because you know a lot of times with women particularly preachers in ministry they face a lot of struggles and really just being a woman in ministry have you faced any hardships because of you being a woman not really because number one you have to remember i'm of a different generation mm. and our generation was more obedient in the church mm. than the generation that we're facing now whereas if whatever whatever our leaders told us we didn't question we just did it and you'll know that from what happened with my mom my mom went before in the movie how my mother had to go before the the board of the, of the of our leaders of our church and they gave her an ultimatum and just being an obedient woman but what the reason why and i don't know if people remember this from the movie but the reason why she was um she took she declined from singing with us anymore was not so much because she wasn't gonna be able to be with us as much as it was she was a leader she was a woman um, and there were so many people that came to the choir and that she drew to God who didn't know God. She was able to bring those people to God. And because of that, she felt like if I, if I start singing with you all, they'll pull that position from me. What would happen to all the people that I've led to Christ? And so with that being said, she made a choice. I'm going to always be your mom and I will always be here for you. I will always work with you. But my job now is to help the people that God has put in my pathway for me to train and to teach, which is the reason why she became the woman that she became. She made a big decision. I don't know that I would have been able to make that decision, but she made the decision to do what she felt was right for leading the people. Because when you're in leadership, there are things that you have to do. You have to be the first person to show you know, what a leader does. Mm -hmm. And a leader can't draw other people if they're not a good leader in their position as well. Right, right. And so, I, and I know, uh, speaking about your mother, you know, I know she was a dominating force and just yeah. in rearing you guys up. And um, as I was, I told um, Dorinda on, the, on when she came on that, um, you know, I was only nine years old when your mom passed away. So oh. I get to, yeah, I get to see, you know, um, your mother through you guys, you know, yeah. so, I'm a so I see it, you yeah. know, through you guys and I didn't know, but I wanted to ask this because, um, just, uh, uh, in regards to the movie and, you know, we're not going to go too much into detail about it, but that, um, 
your mom was a first lady. Now, did she ever really serve fully in that capacity or was she more focused on, you know, the choirs and everything? But did she have a chance to really be in that first lady role? Absolutely. Okay, first let me just say this. First, I want you to realize that the movie was not about Dr. Maddie Moss Clark. The movie was really about the Clark sisters. Okay. So, and I think people miss that mm -hmm. um, because my mother served in the capacity of a first lady. Okay. okay. Um, everything that she did when it came to church was first lady, but when it came to her choir, okay. she, was a, she was a leader in that. That did not take away from her being an effective a, a woman of God as a first lady in our church. Okay. You know, there were many days when she had to preach too. So, you know, it, it just depends on what, what area you're talking about. When it came to her leading and guiding us, she was, she was a pillar for us. She was, um, she was no nonsense and she was uh, Jesus all the way. So mm -hmm. she was non compromising when it came to the Lord. There, there was no compromise there. Mm -hmm. You could not compromise in our house. So that's just the way it was. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I'm glad you clarified that because in the movie, like, you know, it portrayed that, you know, the scene where he, he wanted her to be at the prayer breakfast and she said, right. to go on right. the road. So that's why I wanted to right, add that, that. Right. But in that scene, that particular scene was, a, and I remember when she was going, she was going to California mm. and she had already, like, you know how we do, like, like now with the sisters, we have six months worth of stuff that we going forward that we have to fulfill because we had to cancel all this stuff, right? Right. We got to fulfill that. Well, those things don't just happen a week's notice. She knew six months ago that she was going to do it. Right. But when he when they came up with the idea of having the thing, she had already made a plan. I mean, she was already planned to go. And then you have to remember too, back then they didn't do deposits like they do now. People had to do deposits like they do now because. <laughs> people be jacking them up. Right. Uh -huh. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a lot of it came from just how they plan things. And back then when mothers would plan things, would plan things far in advance because they would have to buy the ticket. They would have to get a, you know, and it wasn't, money wasn't as, as a prevalent. I mean, it was not as um, plentiful as it right. is now back mm -hmm. then. So there were th different things that were taking place. And dad would always wait to the last minute to tell her that he wanted her to be something someplace but he's not he wasn't time conscious mm. you know what I'm saying? so that was the reason why i remember exactly where she was going that time when that happened right right and so and so you you have taken on i know i've i've had the privilege of being in several of your polished image classes with mm -hmm. um during the conference and um mm -hmm. I, I so love them i've been to several of them when you guys have regionals and when she had it in detroit right. But um, so tell us, how, how did that start for you, the Polished Image Sessions? Dorinda is really the reason why I started Polished Image. And the reason why I started it was because we would sit in those, those you know how we would sit in the panels mm -hmm. and watch people. And sometimes people would come. Now, they got all the information because we created the criteria. Mm -hmm. Dorinda and I and our staff, we created the criteria for you to be a part of the panel. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like they didn't have the information to know what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And so when I started seeing like people will come and they want to be in a competition. And if you're going to be in a competition, you want to put your best foot forward first. And so people start coming. Like I remember one time who was in Mississippi, I think it was. And um, um, a young lady came, she had on high pants and flip flops. So you know how I am, Corey. <laughs> so my first question to her was well did you know where you was coming did you know what this was did you know that this was a competition did you know that yes ma'am yes ma'am well did you know that, that there was a, 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 a criteria for how to dress for this competition yes ma'am but you know my mama and she started giving me a story and I said but that ain't got nothing to do with this competition so from that, then we started seeing people who would come. And one time we were in Alabama and there was a guy who came, who uh, his musician, he was supposed to sing. His musician didn't come. His, I don't know what happened with the musician. Anyway, he didn't show up. And so the guy couldn't even play Corey, but he sat on the piano and just started going bling, 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 and singing. Now, see at that point right there, 
at that point right now, you know, I, I don't tolerate ignorance very well at all. And so when he did that, Dorinda said, see, you need to write a, it's you. You need to write a, see, you need to write a book about that. You see what he doing? You need to write. I said, oh, I'm writing a book about that. Then you see people, you know, you they get up and they say things or like you would act like when we question them, you know, and ask them, okay, you want to sing, right? Yes, yes, ma'am, I want to sing. Okay, but have you what have you invested in yourself to sing? What have you invested? Well, I just sing in the bathroom in the shower when I get in. Well, then this this is not the competition, it's not the place for you right now. You're not ready for that. And so you so in my book that I I wrote, it was an opportunity for me to talk about all the things that the people would share with us in the workshops, mm -hmm. as well as when we started questioning them when they were, you know, when they did their their uh, piece of art or whatever they did for the competition, when we started questioning them about where they were, if they had a prayer life, if they went to church, things like that. Those were important questions to ask them in order for them to understand what the competition was actually about. And what we were trying to do is present a platform. What we still do is try to present, present a platform for people who would never get a chance to go to The Voice, who would never get a chance to go to, um, what you call it? American uh, Idol. The American Idol. They would never get an opportunity to do that. So what we were trying to do is present it on a lower scale where if you didn't, we could at least help you get started with your career. That's what mm -hmm. we were trying to do. Right. And, and I appreciate those sessions because, you know, you bring the, the comedy to it, but, you know, you bring <laughs> you bring the truth. And I think, and yeah. that's what people so, you know, it's comedy, but it's the truth. Like, you know, you right. talk about your presentation, how you look and, uh, make, <laughs> you know, so, um, but yeah, so we thank you for those um, polished image. And I don't know when y'all gonna be able to do the next one. Maybe you can do a virtual one. Well, I can, now I do, um, you know, I might do that. That's a good idea, Corey. Now, I um, I still do the workshops by myself. Like if it's a choir or if right. there are people that are trying to have something, I still do the workshops privately, and I do them for other other churches. You know, um, just trying to help people in, even with the choir and with the praise and worship team. I still do workshops for those people, and it's still a part of my polished image. I sell my book. I get a chance to show them things. Like I get on musicians and you've heard me get on musicians when we talk about this in the, in the workshop. Right. You're a musician and when, when it's time for you to play, you outside yep. taking a break. When the pastor up preaching, what's wrong? Yep. What's your problem? Well, you a musician and because you playing the organ or playing the piano, you don't think you're supposed to give an offer and see something wrong with you. That's okay? right. Because you, you get a paycheck when you get finished. That's right. And see, these are real things. And like, you know, and that's why I said, I really want to work on bringing you to my church because um, we need help. Mm -hmm. We need well, help. And I'm willing to do that's whatever all. I can to help. You know that. You know how to do it. I, my biggest thing is, you know, when when I want to be more effective, I just want people to be touched by what I do. Right. I want people to learn. Just like we learned by my mom. Mm -hmm. If you learn, if you know anything about me, all I'm going to remember me by is what kind of a seed did I sow in your life? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Did I sow a good seed in your life? Did I teach you something that you didn't know? Did I teach you something that carried you from where you were when you met me to where you are as an adult or, you know, as a professional? Did I do something to help you in that area? That's what, that's my whole, the depth of who I am. That's all I want for people. Right, right. And I, and I know what, you know, whenever you can, this pandemic and you can start doing these sessions, I know the stuff that you would have to offer our church would be very beneficial and, and help us because I'm, I'm quite certain all these places and then Absolutely. all the church, the people that come to these conferences, they're coming so that they can glean and get help right. in their exactly. ministry. So that's, that, that's what it's about, you know, about growing and advancing and saying, Absolutely. I, like I said, through my experience with the conference, my ministry has become better because I've taken what I was taught and applied it to Absolutely. ministry. That's and so it. that's what people don't understand what people need to right. do. <laughs> so yeah, I want to yeah. ask, has there ever been a, whether it was with your sisters or with you individually, do you ever remember a time where God just used you mightily and powerfully that you'll never forget a moment like that 
just it was just the power of the Holy Ghost that you'll never forget. I think it was I think uh, the last the, the the latest time that I had that experience. I've had several, but the, my greatest memory now is when I went to the Dominican Republic and the first time I spoke mm. to the women. Um, and the anointing was on me so heavy that night. And sometimes and we don't really understand how God works and it's not for us to understand. And I don't even ask God, I'm not trying to get in your business. But I think <clears throat> the most important thing was when you see people come to God because of something you say. Mm -hmm. My message was, are you on your assignment? Mm -hmm. And the assignment is what God has assigned us to do. But the problem is Corey, Many people don't know really and truly what their assignment really is. Mm -hmm. Because if you have no, if you don't have a committed life to God, you will never know what your assignment is. Mm -hmm. You might know what your gift or your talent is, but you, what your assignment is. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you, when we do things, we go through life and, and, and through our daily, you know, our daily works and our daily walks, what we do in life. Sometimes we're so caught up in that, so we forget about where God is really trying to take us. Mm -hmm. God has really got a place planned up, uh, planned up for us. Mm -hmm. but, but do we really acknowledge what He has mm -hmm. planned for us? Well, if you don't have, if you don't have a commitment to God, how will you ever know that? Mm -hmm. And you will never know that if you don't, if you don't have no study time, if you don't have no prayer time. How will you ever know anything? We, you can always tell in a person's life when they have spent time with God. Right, you can right. Tell. But you can also tell when a person has not spent time with, with God. Mm. When they may be a powerful speaker, but there's no anointing on what they're mm. doing. Or as, as the church people say, ain't no oil. Uh, right, right. Okay. I see some grease, but I don't see no oil. So and that's that's good because I always say, you know, I was just talking with somebody the other day. There's a difference between being gifted and anointed. Absolutely. Because somebody can just get up there and sing, but the anointing is going to make the difference. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what makes miss. the difference with Absolutely. you know the Clark sisters. Because I said, like, you know, it's just, you know that the anointing is there. And that's what makes the difference. Now, you guys are gifted. You guys can sing Absolutely. no matter what. But because you have the anointing or with that, that makes the difference. And that that's often, Corey, is uh, I'm, I'm happy that you said that because that is one of the things that I always say when people are interviewing us. People think that we can sing so great. We're no better than anybody else. We might sing. We might Our harmony might be better than somebody else's. But at the end of the day, people that are, quote, unquote, that are singers that can really sing, they can sing too. The, the difference is... When when you sing, and that was something that our mother taught us. If you have no anointing, you just giving a message. You ain't doing nothing. People are not being blessed. You just giving it, you just, you just, you are just giving them a message. But if you are anointed to do what God tells you to do, that's gonna change, that will tell in the people's lives how they receive you. Do they change their life? Do they feel the power of God telling them what to do or compelling them to come? How effective really are you? If you have no anointing, you're just a good singer, period. Mm, that's right. Speaker, yeah. That goes for the speakers too. That's right. And, and you have to be careful. You listen to some of these speakers. Some of these speakers, speakers be making up their own story. You don't know if they're telling the truth. Or if you don't know the Bible, you ain't going to know if they're telling you the truth. You saying that, you saying, yeah, go ahead. You don't know if they're lying or telling you. What? You don't know what they're telling you. That's right. And you know what? You're right because I see it's, it's so often in church. And that's what I'm saying. We just go off of it feels good and it sounds good. But at the end of the day, there's no substance to it. You know, when people Absolutely. just go, they just take it. And, and you know, and, I, and I, I hate to say I've been in services like that. But then when I leave, like you're empty, you know, it don't because there's no there's nothing behind it, which is the anointing. So. Yeah, and that's very true. That's very true. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, you even saying that because the anointing is really what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. And Twinkie wrote a song, The Anointing. The Anointing. And that's the scripture, though. That's right. And, and so when the anointing is present, the, like my mother would tell, like, I'll, I'll give you a good example of the anointing. We had an opportunity. We sang in Boston at a university, at, the, at, at a Berkeley College, College mm. University. When we sang, um, we were singing, I can't remember, I think we were singing, um, not living, we did, oh, we did uh, Blessed and Highly Favored. It was right after Blessed and Highly Favored had come out. 
when we sung the song, Karen, at the end of the song, instead of us ending the song, the Holy Ghost was so heavy in the room. Karen went, took a whole nother route, okay? Um, when she started going to a place else, because we're so connected um, and because of how we operate in the anointing, Karen started going someplace else and we just began to follow her where she mm -hmm. was going, right? Mm -hmm. Singing. And the Holy Ghost came in that building so then people was running. Mm -hmm. were, I mean, we were at the university. Then young young people were running and crying out to God. Just I mean, I mean, it was it went and it turned into an altar call, right? Right. But the thing was we had to go back and finish the concert. We finished the concert and then when we got off the stage, we went back in the back and we were all trying to remember what we did, Corey, mm. the band, all of us was going, oh my God, did you see how the anointing was in the room? And then we tried to say, we were asking, well, how did, where did it start at? What, what did we do? Nobody could remember. Mm. You know why, Corey? Because that anointing at that moment was for that house. Mm. And because it was for that house, the Lord would not even let us remember it because it wasn't for us, it was for them. Wow. Can wow. You imagine going someplace you're not uh, you have not consulted God and you're just ministering, but there's no anointing. But there's people there crying out to God, wanting God more, but you are not able to deliver that because you're not anointed to do so. So uh, when you allow God's anointing to really press upon you and, and really spend time with God, that's how you get that, that's how you gain. Uh, being anointed to do with God, you gotta have a, you have to have an opportunity in a presence with God. Period. Well, well, that's awesome advice. That's awesome advice, especially for the young people because they just yes. a lot of them just say, "I can sing," so I'm gonna just get up here and right. So the old saints and you know people like your mom and you guys, right. you guys taught us that the relationship makes the difference with God. Absolutely. That Absolutely. you know it, that's that's what really matters. You having a relationship with God because, like you said, it's gonna tell off on you when you get right. up here. Right, <laughs> so, it's true. So. I want to move into as as we get um kind of bring it to a close. Um, I want to um you know just congratulate you on um the album you know and you are singing on that song Power. Okay, <laughs> now you you say you don't you can't sing like your sisters, but I, I don't agree with you on that because <laughs> on that song Power you growling oh, you God. ripping you running on that song and I you know and I just when I listened to that when I first heard that I said. <laughs> Auntie Jackie is singing on the song. So, but, um, the, and that's a powerful song, Power, you know, Thank just you. talking about the power of God. Absolutely. <laughs> and, it, you know, and it's funny because they made me write it. And, you know, I, like I haven't written in years. I wrote on my mom's album, but I was not prolific like my sisters were, you oh. know. And so I just prayed and I came home and I prayed. It was like the whole, only a week. And so I had like a week and I just got before God and I said, Lord, I want something that's going to bless the people. Mm. And I said, I need you to give me the words to bless the people. Mm. And so we were sneaking over words. We was all in there trying to give a line or something. And I just said, hold up. And when that said, hold up, the Lord just kind of gave me the words. And that's how we went forward. See, that's, that's, that's the anointing right there. Gave exactly. you the words right on us. Right on exactly. the <laughs> but the album is is awesome from start to finish, and and I still I still play this CD right here. Put that one down, okay? <laughs> we can do a yes, yes. See, I see, I see. I'm a true supporter, and um, that song blessing me. I I still oh, play. Yeah. I love blessing me. Yeah, I love you know, sometimes. Sometimes we do blessing me in our set when we're doing like we'll take somebody a song from everybody's song. I mean, for everybody's record, and we'll do that our song. That's we oh. do do that. Okay, so that's good success on the album and everything. But I want to kind of um, end with some Q and A's from the supporters and the fans. They oh, have sure, absolutely. So they got a question: What do you be coloring when you're on these interview segments? <laughs> <laughs> they want to know what are you coloring? Well, you know what? Me and my grand okay, I shouldn't be telling y'all this. So, me and my granddaughters, we have a contest, okay? We have a coloring contest, mm -hmm. and so it's my three granddaughters and me. And so, 
if they send me a note and say, Grandma, we coloring tonight, I'll be trying to do mine ahead of time. So if I forget about it, I won't be able to say I didn't do my part. So uh, sometimes when I'm doing these interviews, and um, but like the last interview, like somebody called me about the last interview I did with Dorinda Karen. I mean, yeah, right. Dorinda Karen with LaQuint. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. I didn't even realize I was doing that. That I mean, I was, I was, I think I, I was coloring at first, but then I stopped coloring, and I was doing so. I don't even know what I was doing, but I didn't go to school with LaQuint, so I didn't know LaQuint. Right. So he was he was gearing all his questions towards Dorinda Karen. So I said, well, shoot, let me do what I'm going to do then. That's when I started coloring. And then I'm trying to think what else I did. Oh, I think I drank. I had a piece of candy. I was trying to keep myself. Y'all on that interview, y'all was all live on that one. <laughs> it's all live. They talked about a uh, first lady sheer going to sleep. They talked about. <laughs> I mean, that was hilarious. LeQuinn is our friend, though. He's a he's a cool guy. Did you make uh, him his liver and onions yet? <laughs> no, he ain't called me. And I ain't going to do it till he called me. Either I happen to do it. See, <laughs> I, you know what I told him when we hung up? Tell Karen to fix you some liver and onions. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to add some of these questions are funny. Like, OK, so somebody asked. If you were stuck on the side of the road, which sister would you call first? If I was stuck? Yeah. I would call none of my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I call Triple A Sugar. Triple A. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So let me just answer your question. Uh, let me see. If I was stuck on the side of the road, who's the first person I would call? I probably, among my sisters, Probably, probably Dorinda. <laughs> probably. And that's a big, that's a, that's big, a big, probably. probably. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> I'm going to get you when I see you, Corey. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That's what they asked. I said, I said, well, you saying probably, so that means y'all probably would both be stuck. <laughs> okay, so what's like a, a, a habit of, you know, um, your sisters that get on your nerves that kind of irks you oh a good one uh calling them on the phone and they don't answer okay. and it's something important that i need to talk to them about and they don't answer the phone so this is what i do i send them a nasty text you know like i'll be sending them a text and i say i say the n-word and i tell them why won't you answer me you dumb so-and-so <laughs> that's what i'm doing and then, then Corey, they answer me. <laughs> they make me so mad. Oh, 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 I'll give you a good one with Karen. With Karen. Sometimes Karen won't answer my calls. I'll text her and she won't answer my, my nasty text, but I'll be telling them off in my text. She won't answer. I'll call Bishop. Bishop, can you tell Karen to please answer the phone? I've been trying to reach her for an hour. She won't answer it. She's not responding to my text again. He get on her so good. So I'll sometimes, but I'll do that. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> wow. That's how I get an answer. <laughs> so um, what's, um, what's a favorite birthday memory? <gasps> oh, my favorite birthday memory is when my daughter and my kids gave me, I think it was my 65th birthday. But well, when you said you're only 35, so that yeah, was like, yeah, but that, yeah, I'm, that gonna, was... I'm gonna digress. My 35th birthday. Okay. Oh, uh, they they had a big big thing at the church for me, and Daryl Coley and um, Mar Marette Clark uh, came, and they surprised me. And I, at first, I was looking at the screen, and they were putting stuff up on the screen. So now I was sitting there because I was annoyed that we had to go and we were supposed to, Clarks was supposed to sing that night. Mm. And they kept saying that it was a concert. So I'm just thinking it was a concert. We could sing and go home. And we was on our way there and we had a flat tire. And in us having a flat tire, my uh, we ended up have they had to end up sending somebody to pick me up because I was closer to my house than I was to the church. So they sent somebody to pick me up in the gas station, kept my car and changed up. And so when I got to church, 
and we they was going over the program and I kept looking up, looking up, and I was and I when I looked up again and it said happy birthday. I was just done. Mm. That was probably was the best birthday I've ever had in my life. Uh Dr. Dr. Um who was her name? Dr. Uh, my daughter, my kids, and um uh Dr. Out of um Arkansas, uh Portia, Dr. Por uh, uh Portia, they all gave me this big birthday bash. It was awesome. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful event. Okay. And so, and they want to know what, um, are you going to have like a chat session with, you know, um, I guess the sisters and, and maybe some of your children or your nieces and nephews, just like you do the cooking. They want to see like a chat session that you just what we talk. talk. What are we going to talk about? Anything? I guess, I guess, you know, life, <laughs> you know, people have questions about, you know, just, regular topics you know you know you have your channel how you would just answer random questions and those yeah. types of things so they want to see i guess everybody come together and do that we could do that i could I, i'll talk to my my nieces and nephews and see if they want to do that i'm sure I'll, yeah i'll do that they they really want to know about you know the sister's going to do it <laughs> so, um, well, because chat with us. Just realize with that, when that, when when you guys did that cooking segment, that like just went viral. I mean, it just went all over, and it was when it, they put it on YouTube. It was on people that's like not even a part of the church. The people <laughs> not even in the church watched it. So y'all see the influence that y'all have, and the people want to see it so bad. Bless their heart. Well, we'll do it again. I, I I just have to prepare them. I have to see. I have to teach. I have to tell them what they're gonna cook. I can't let them come. Dorinda, now look. Dorinda was supposed to come, and she was supposed to cook. She was supposed to cook one thing. Cube steak. She was supposed to cook. Um, what was she supposed to cook? I can't remember what she was supposed to cook, but she brought something totally different from what she should have been cooking. Told nothing. <laughs> so you know. Now is, is, do is, is um Twinkie is is she a good? Is she, can she cook? Girl, bye. No. White containers is in her refrigerator. <laughs> what that tell you? <laughs> no, she don't cook. She she uh, but I told you, I'm trying to teach her how to boil eggs and make some scrambled eggs. Boiled eggs, that's easy to make. <laughs> oh, really? We said Twinkie. <laughs> no, we're gonna pray for Twink. Okay, so for advice for future artists, and maybe people that even want to go into the medical profession as yourself. You are a nurse. And um, so what would be some advice for them? I think, okay, so if you're going in the medical field, most important thing is your heart's got to be in it and you have to be a compassionate person. A lot of nurses today go into the medical field um, for the money. And so they, and, it, and it's reflected by their work and their and how they treat people and how they talk to people. Uh, that's real important. I think the reason why I've been so successful at being a nurse and a, a wound nurse is because of the compassion and because of when I started nursing, it was totally different than what it is right now. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, you know, you have an opportunity to see how people work on the floor. And when you see how people work on the floor, if they're not compassionate, if they don't know how to talk to people, even people who are irate with you and are nasty to you or call you the N-word when they're another nationality, you have to learn how to take that and let it roll off your back. Uh, as far as an artist is concerned, I think the most important thing about an artist is don't quit your day job. Always <laughs> keep your job. Even if you have to resort, resort, to, resort to working part-time at night somewhere, when you home, you gotta work out a deal and work out that deal so so good and so on point that you can do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, but never quit your day job unless you got um, you know, a few Grammys. I, I just wouldn't and and, and, so, and you've always been good at telling us that I remember in your sessions you would always be so transparent about that. Like, cause you said, if I don't ever sing with my sisters again, I have my nursing, you know, you always, and so that is I, so important to hear to, that. I, I still work today. I mm -hmm. still work. I'm not working during this pandemic because I'm asthmatic. So my doctor put, took me off because I'm too much of a high risk for that. Mm -hmm. However, the most important thing to me is if they, if they be, if, if we don't sing no more, 
Mm-hmm. I can still walk up into any medical place and still work as a nurse. Mm-hmm. And I make I make good money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so if someone asks here, what is your um, biggest goal? And um, if you had a goal that you might have reached or if you're trying to obtain, um, what would that be? One of your biggest goals? I think my biggest goal is, and I, and I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it, but I'm going to say it. My biggest goal is I would like to appear in a movie. That's my biggest goal. Wow. Wow. What kind of movie? I don't care. <laughs> I don't even care. Well, wait a minute. Let me not say that. Wait, hold on. Nothing is going to exploit me or anybody in my family or anybody or the church. So nothing like that. So a movie where, you know, I need to be, um, you know, somebody who's helping somebody or somebody who's showing compassion to somebody or help, you know, in a, in a hospital scene or something like that. Anything, I would do that. And and you know what? And and, and, with, and I got to go back to the Clark Sisters movie. I thought you guys were going to actually make an appearance in that movie. Like, you know... Mm-hmm. I mean, at not not like not like at the end, but actually like maybe kind of you know when it got to you guys being older, you could play yourself. That would have been nice, but it worked out the best. I because I think the people who played our parts did it right. They did awesome. They, they did, did awesome an job, and it was an opportunity for them to even live through what we lived through, right? Um, and and see what it was like being in our household, and I and like I said earlier. You know, a lot of people were saying that my mother was mean. My mother wasn't mean at all. But when it came to music and music ministry, she was that was her passion. Mm-hmm. And so anything that's your passion, you put your all into it. It was her passion for us to be the greatest. And I think she had a good passion because I think we are, we're doing pretty good as these little golden girls. We're doing pretty good. You are. That's, people are saying they, they, they want to see you in Greenleaf. They want to see you in that. I would love it. Love it because I watch it. <laughs> but yeah, and you you mentioned something like I said, and you know, and some of these comments that I I, I try to ignore them because I rock with you guys so hard, and then you know, and it hurts me to see painful comments. And a lot of people, like you mentioned, that your mother's not mean; she was just stern and had the passion. Absolutely. And sometimes I, and when I share that, because I see comments that are off about sometimes about the sisters, and I'm like, but y'all don't know them like that's just they're just they're passionate they're trying Absolutely. to push you guys to you know because like i said if they were at the conference they would see you know exactly they would exactly. see you guys in the element like where they'd be like no do it again do it again you know things right. like that <laughs> so you're right so, and not only were you 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 mentioned being in a movie but you were in some plays too right oh i was in i think like seven or eight stage plays yeah wow wow I was in a play with LeVan, who plays on uh, The Pains. Oh, Tyler Perry? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're very good friends. I was in a movie with him, in a play with him. I was in a play with uh, Morris Day. I was in a play with Trina Bra- Braxton. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was in a play with oh, plenty of people. Um, Viv- Viv- Vivica Fox. I was oh, in a play with her. I was in a play with... Um, Ooh, Cheryl Pepsi Riley. I was in a play. Let me see who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, I was in a play with a lot of people. Wow. Um, stage plays because that was back when Michael Matthews, and then um, uh, a guy from Florida. I mean, not from Florida. From uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Gray. Mm. Name he out of Atlanta. I did a lot of movies. With him. I mean, a lot of, of uh, plays with him. Yeah. Would you would you ever consider doing um, a comedy show? I think I, I probably could. <clears throat> you, I would buy a ticket. <laughs> would you buy a ticket? <laughs> you, well, you know, and I mean, and I say, and you know, when I say, you know, people say like, do they mean to be funny? I'm like, you, it's just how they are. No, it's like, just how we are. I know because it's just like. I mean, just these interviews, like all of these interviews that you guys have been doing, have just been hilarious from start. Right. And that's just, and you know what? And the killing part about it, Corey, is that's how we really are together, even now. Even when, well, like, okay, I'll give you a good example. You remember that that one thing that my when Twinkie was blowing the balloon, and we was in Texas, and Twinkie was blowing up. Do you remember that? Yes. 
Now, we didn't even realize at first that Nikki and Angel was recording us. But we was just we was just doing that in the room by ourselves. We didn't realize she was recording us until later when you kept seeing Nikki just walk walk back in front of the thing because she knew Angel was recording us. We didn't know that. <coughs> so that's how we are. That's just that's that's us. So. Now, and I'm gonna ask this question: What's like the craziest thing a fan has ever done? Craziest thing a fan has ever done? Probably. Um, when we were coming, I remember we was in England, and we were coming out of the out of the, the venue. It was like like ten thousand people in that place. We were coming out, and the people rushed us, and they picked us. They were picking us up, holding us up like this. And that's probably the craziest thing somebody's ever done with us. We were so afraid, <laughs> but they were so happy to meet us, and you know, it was just and it's it's such an uh, awesome experience to have people love you that way and appreciate you for your craft and what you do. Most important thing is that if you're not, um, if you don't have a committed life and you can't share God with them, then what is it for? So that's how we look at it. Okay. And so, and as we, as I bring the second to us, I have another question. Uh, what's one thing in, what's one thing if you could change in life, what, what would you change? I would change what we're going through right now. Uh, all of this, prejudice and killing black people and treating us like we're not human um that would be something that weighs heavy with me um I, and i i even within the last two weeks i had to stop looking at instagram because people were posting so many things and so my thing is just to pray for our people because mm -hmm. we have been ridiculed all our life just because of the color of our skin right. it's amazing how People want to be the same color of our skin, but they don't want to be treated like the way. Wow, so, wow. The thing, and the thing that the thing that I also want people to make sure they look, go look up Jane Elliott. Mm. She did what we call Oprah. The, that yeah, that that her, um that race test. Watch yeah. her. Watch her. She's and awesome. Watch her. She's and awesome. you see how those people acted, the way they acted towards the blue eyes and the and the brown eyed yeah, people. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I, I uh, applaud her because she really does advocate for black people. She's not advocating for the word black, she's advocating for people of color. That's and right. it's so important that we understand that we are people of color, but that at the same token, that we understand that there's more to us than just the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. We're just as smart as a white person or Indian person or a Chaldean person, any person of any other other race. We're just as smart as they are. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we're treated the way we are is mostly because of ignorance, because of people who. OK, we going to see if she's going to come back in. Okay, I see y'all questions. I see your comments. I'm gonna see if um okay, she's back in now. Okay. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on your show today. I appreciate you so much. Okay. Um, to everybody out there, if I give you one tip, and that is love your family, love on your family. Please tell your family that you love them. Don't let days go by when you don't say you love them. If you're having ills with people in your family members, go to them, tell them you're sorry. Sometimes we got to say we sorry when we really. When we don't feel like we have done anything, you still got to learn how to be compassionate and loving to each other. Love yeah. your neighbor. Okay. And, and we also um, we also have um, the cash app is Corey Malloy because we're going to bless Auntie Jackie. She's been a blessing bless you. to so many of us, but bless we're going to bless you. And I thank you for coming on. I know you got to go, but I thank you for um, spending this time and just taking this time out with me. Thank you, so, Corey. Okay, love you, so bless you. Love you, baby. Okay, love you, bye -bye. too. Bless you. Okay, bless bye you. Bye -bye. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So, guys, we thank you for joining um, us with Auntie Jackie on tonight, Wow Ministries. I know she didn't get to answer everybody's questions. She was on a time schedule for today. But, um, like I said, my cash app is up, and we will definitely make sure that she gets all those donations. We send them over to her on behalf of Wow Ministries and everybody that donates. So, we thank you for joining us on this segment. And um, we, we, for those who are coming and that's going to watch the replay, we thank you and we bless you. And until next time, we'll see you again. God bless you.